Good morning, guys. Welcome, way, way, welcome, welcome, welcome to Wake Up Well. Welcome to Wake Up Well. Uh, I'm Duncan, and today we are going to be looking at a couple of verses. One in Isaiah chapter seven, uh, the second half of verse nine, and then we're going to jump into Ephesians six, verse thirteen. Um, I-, I wonder if you've ever found yourself like in the midst of a crowd, and you're going in the opposite direction. To the majority of the crowd. Um, I've definitely had that once or twice, you know, when there's processions down streets and you're like, oh, bum, I really need to get up there. And you have to walk right through the midst of people going in completely the opposite direction. It can feel really jarring and overwhelming, can't it? But if we think about it, actually, that's very often where we find ourselves as followers of Jesus in this world. Jesus tells us very clearly that he's called us to be in this world, but we're not of this world. The the ways of the kingdom are very often very different to the ways of the world. And if we follow Jesus, it will often cause us to go against the flow of prevailing society. And if we don't have Uh, the right perspective, it can feel really jarring and it can feel quite overwhelming when we try to do it in our own strength. But what we need is to know what the Lord is saying, to know who he is, and for that to strengthen us, to enable us to go in a very different direction when that's what the Lord calls us to do. There's this uh, account in Isaiah chapter 7, and, and there's this king, King Ahaz, he's the king of Judah, And there's these two other kings who basically come out to come and attack Judah uh, and the nation. And uh, it doesn't look good for him. Um, But Isaiah the prophet has had this word from the Lord. So he goes out, Isaiah goes to meet King Ahaz. And he says to them, look, it's true. These two kings and their armies, they are coming and they are going to attack. But he says, you do not need to worry It's not going to take place. It's not going to happen. But then he says these remarkable words. He says, unless your faith is firm, this is a word from the Lord through Isaiah to King Ahaz, unless your faith is firm, I cannot make you stand. In other words, God's saying to Ahaz, look, these kings are coming out to attack you. I'm going to stop them from doing that. But nevertheless, unless your faith is firm, I can't make you stand. And friends, here's the good news. In Jesus, we know where we are going. We know that we can stand strong and firm in him. But unless we have faith in him, he cannot make us stand. We have to choose to actually believe him. You know, we all of us are going to face troubles. Jesus said it really clearly in, in, in John 16. I've told you these things that in me you have may have peace. Because in this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. I I, I wonder for how many of us have been brutally honest, have we come through this pandemic season? And how many of us have actually got to the point where we're like, "I, I feel like I'm barely standing in my faith. The answer, friends, is this. Ephesians 6 verse 13. Put on the full armour of God so that when the day of evil comes, because it will come, (laughs) we will face all kinds of trials all the time. And this last 15 months has shown us that very clearly. So that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, having put on the full armour of God. You'll be able to stand your ground and after you've done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. Friends, this is the starting point. When we find ourselves in difficult situations where we find ourselves going in the opposite direction and it feels like we're very vulnerable and we're very weak and we don't know how to stand, we do it by making sure we have the belt of truth upon us. How? What are we doing today? What are you doing? What am I doing to fix our gaze upon Jesus even in the midst of difficulty? When we see who he is and what he has said, it will enable us to stand. I love like the Jews, uh, God commanded the Jewish people to have tassels on their clothes, to put boxes on their doorposts so that when they 
felt and saw the tassels, when they saw the, the, the boxes on their doorposts as they went in and out of their houses, practical things that they physically saw repeatedly throughout the day. It was a reminder of an incredible spiritual reality that God was present and with them and for them. Friends, one really key way of knowing what it is to stand firm in our faith is to, what could you practically do today to hold up truth before you that your gaze will be placed upon Jesus? I don't know what it might be. Maybe every time you get in your car, you've got a little sticker or something that just reminds you of a, a promise that the Lord has spoken over you. I don't know what it might be. Every time you clean your teeth in the morning and the evening, it just reminds you of one of the promises of the Lord that enables us to be reminded of the faithfulness of God, that as we stand firm in him, he will lift us up even when things look like uh, they're coming against us, that we know that he is greater. Friends, I bless you today to find really practical ways of putting on the armour of God, of holding truth before you in everything that you do, that you might stand firm in every situation. Bless you guys.